um hi there um in today's video we'll be take, picking up from where we left off and um we'll be talking about creative writing as a viable tool for mass communication this is the fourth episode you can find other episodes on this channel um so we left off at the point where we we're talking about or where we mentioned um the various forms or different forms of blind non-fiction or plain non-fiction otherwise known as factual non-fiction and um, in today's video we'll be talking about some of them at length um so here we go um so here is a chart showing different forms of plain non-fiction and we have academic writing we have biography and autobiography we have history we have journalism, we have self-help or manuals or guides, and we have authors that we couldn't mention because of constraint of time and others, other factors here. So we're talking about them one at a time, and we'll begin with academic writing. Yeah, so um, academic writing is clear, concise, focused, structured and backed up with evidence academic writing is academic writing academic writing is rigorous is um is um how would i put it is is how that um is thoughtful and it takes a lot of understanding a lot of comprehension you don't just go into academic writing without grasping the content grasping the concepts grasping the context and knowing how best to put them without having making making whatever you're trying to um pass ambiguous so it is its purpose is to aid the reader's understanding yes when you um have to write a paper an academic paper or a term paper or an academic research or an um a final year project you have to make your language precise concise clear and most importantly ensure that whenever your readers read it they understand the concept you are trying to um, explain to them, or they understand the point you're coming from and what you are going through. Okay, so the academic writing has a formal tone and style, but it is not complex and does not require the use of long sentences and complicated vocabulary. Yes, in academic writing, you do not use ambiguous words. You do not use complicated sentences, just use simple sentences, as long as um, you don't have to use long sentences. Avoid long, long sentences as much as possible, because um, long sentences, they always come with their issues, with punctuations and all. I know what punctuations do to, to um, text. When you mispunctuate, you, mis, um, you misguide the readers. So you, they will have... Um, distinct interpretations of whatever you have written, except one who knows what you are talking about and can perceive or can um, perceive the, the thin line between the correct and incorrect. But when you um, present your ideas in clear, concise sentences, you'll be able to excel or you'll be able to ace your academic writing um yeah i mentioned complicated vocabulary the style yes just has to be plainly written without complications without um having to play on words without this combobulation without um how do i put it whatever you call it whatever any any form of ambiguation happens so you you avoid it in academic writing so this definition is um called from the website of the university of leeds on an article titled Academic Writing. And um, the next one is biography and autobiography. Yeah, so as examples of academic writing, before we proceed, include term papers, assignments, um, uh, project research, normal research, and all of that, things you do in school, things you do within the academic system, um, um, PhD theses, Final year projects and whatever and whatever. That's it. Academic writing has to be whatever you do within the academic system, within the school system, secondary, tertiary, postdoc, postgraduate, whatever. 
Uh, the next one is biography and autobiography. Um, so a biography or simply bio, yeah, um, a more short, a, a more common form of biography is bio, where you write about yourself in the third person. This is most com mostly common with um, awardees, um, writers, where you have to contribute to a particular website, contribute to a particular literary magazine, to contribute to um, an anthology. You submit your works along, accompanied with a bio. They will specify the number of words they need. So it can be 70-word bio, it can be a one-sentence bio, it can be several sentence bio, it can be a full bio, you know, a detailed bio of yourself. So most, especially when you are receiving an award, they will read your bio before it presents you the award. So it's more like a detailed bio. And when you have to, um, how, do you call, how, do, how do I put it, when you have to, um, send your works to a literary magazine and just they can say, okay, a minimum of a hundred word bio or maximum of a hundred word bio, and you send that. So, regardless, it is a detailed description of a person's life. This is biography, a descri detailed description of a person's life, which could be any person, but especially biography is written by a third party. It's like a bio. When even though you write about yourself, you use the third person pronouns. You say, um, Bola Ahmed Tinubu is a. You don't say, uh, my name is Bola Ahmed Tinubu. No, you say Bola Ahmed. So it's mostly written in the third person, like as if you are reporting whatever you're talking about. Uh, it involves more than just the basic facts like education, work, relationships, and death. It portrays a person's experience of these life events. For example, when you read the work of, um, uh, it's not coming. There, there are biographies written by um, authors. I, I, I once saw the one, one written about um, um, fella Nikola Kokuti, the Afrobeat legend. And I saw one written about uh, Amadou Bello and others. So I, I don't remember the author's names, but yeah. That's what a biography should look like. You analyze a person's life from step to step. But a, a, a typical biography, while you might need to use um, special words, use a trendy style, a biography should contain only facts. You don't exaggerate. You don't um, downplay events. You report them as plainly or as um, objectively as they occurred. Um, Say, so unlike a profile or a curriculum vitae or resume, a biography presents a subject's life story, highlighting various aspects of the life, including intimate details of experience and may include an analysis of the subject's personality. Yes. Um, when you look through a person's life, you mirror a person's life, you, tr you tend to find, um, discover some things about the person, some inherent things, things you won't know um, by just looking at a person. So a biography is detailed. It involves events in the person's life, in the subject, especially, especially when it happens to be a person, subject, um, subject's life, um, where, where, where you have, well, where you have um, the biography of um, Sahama Dubelo, you find things that dictate the kind of ideologies he has, the kind of um, um, belief, the kind of superstitions he holds, and others. Um, so a biography, is written by a third party, while your autobiography is written by yourself. For example, we have um, um, My Watch by the former president, um, Oluche Gwabasanjo. He wrote the story of his life, or um, long, The Long Walk to Freedom by um, the late um, Nelson Mandela, where he mirrored his, his life up, um, up to the point, his, his presidency. And all of that, all of us, their autobiographies, uh, yes, just like the, um, the African Child by, oh, sorry, I forgot the title, but um, the autobiography written by former Zambian president, Kenneth Kaunda, and others. You find lots of autobiographies. While the biography is written by a, first, uh, um, a third person, um, an autobiography is written by the person who owns the story. So you're writing your own story, but then it's expected that when you write your own story, you write it objectively, without mincing words, without having to do some ambiguous things. Write it in a clear way and um, objectively. That's completely factual. Otherwise, you are writing fiction. 
<laughs> so yeah, the next one is history. Yeah, while biography and autobiography could will be about humans or living things, and let me say, let me say that is history could be about a person, a community, a place, a thing, or whatever. As long as it's about something, history could also be about a person. While, but while um, biography and autobiography refer to um, persons, history could refer to anything. You can say history of this village, or the history of that village, or the history of my family. It's just a story detailing events that led to something or led to someone's becoming. It's just almost the same as biography and autobiography. So it says history is an umbrella term comprising past events as well as the memory, discovery, collection, organization, presentation, and interpretation of these events. Um, this definition reminds me of the definition of accounting. Accounting is supposed to be, um, how do you put it, chronological. Same goes for its history. When you do accounting or history, it comes step by step, just like biography and autobiographies. Write it from the birth to um you need, um from from um what do you call it um yeah the word is not coming so from the embryonic phase if it's possible to the neonatal phase to the childhood phase to the teenage phase to the adulthood phase to the whatever phase any phase that comes afterwards so it goes from phase to phase from phase to phase from the nursery bed to the to, to the po tra transplanting to the point where you have to graft another three eight to eight the point where you have to you know just forms of cultivation and others the um history is um chronological step by step it goes through the time or goes through the existence of whatever you're discussing um face by face or epoch by epoch. Um, so the next one, okay, yeah, Histori historians seek knowledge of the past using historical sources, such as written documents, oral accounts, art and material artifacts, and ecological markers. Yes. Um, some histories are defined by ecological markers, like um, the Dead Sea. There's a history that surrounds the Dead Sea, just stories and all of that. Same thing with the biblical story of um, Moses and Pharaoh where they covered Pharaoh's body from the sea. And surprisingly, um, um, Pharaoh's body has refused to rot. And um, then it, it, it brings, uh, all, like, it begs the question of whether Pharaoh actually drowned. But then, after, go, after um, the, uh, the, what do call it, post-mortem, they discovered that indeed had granules of salt in his nose, which shows that actually, According to history, as history says, he drowned, but magically or somehow his body has refused to rot, and it happens. So we knew of this because of history, biblical history, um, um, how do, uh, cultural history, whatever history. So this definition is from Wikipedia. Um, the next one is um, journalism. Yeah, journalism is is a, a very broad aspect of um, factual non-fiction or plain non-fiction and while journalism has evolved from having to follow a rigid pattern under journalism there are part there are there are, there are forms of journalism that follow the rigid pattern but then journalism has evolved it's no longer the traditional way of journalism journalism has changed has moved from the point where you have to use just basic words to a point where you can explore with style explore styles experiment and others but basically Journalism at its basic at its um at its basic level is meant to be completely factual, free of ambiguity and concise and clear. Um so journalism is the production of and distribution of reports on current events based on facts and supported with proof or evidence. Yes, importantly, journalism must be accompanied with proof and evidence. Journalism can is always based on facts. Journalism that is not based on facts. It's just um, fallacy, falsehood, fake news, um, as popular in these days, um, and others. So, journalism is meant to be plain and factual.
as this definition is called from Wikipedia. Um, yes, especially in reports, news reports. Um, it, an editor once told me that a news report should be so basic that um, a basic four students should be able to read a news report and comprehend what it's saying, comprehend the news in it, comprehend the, the updates in it. So, um, 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 like I mentioned, like I said earlier, journalism at its basic level should be plain, bland, and um, clear, concise, and um, how do I put it, understandable. Okay, and the last one is um, self-help manuals and guides. Yeah, the term manual or guide, what we refer to the a document whose main aim is to provide information or instructions. Yes, we have manuals, guides. When you buy a television set, it's accompanied by a manual or accompanied by a user manual, yeah. That's what they call it. And um, same goes for when you buy, when you are trying to learn new recipes, you buy a cookbook and um, you find recipes in it. Tells you, um, add two tablespoons of salt, add two teaspoons of honey, um, um, blob of paste, this, this, that, 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 all of that. So it's, it helps you, or the aim of the writing is to help you with information or instructions regarding your aim, what you intend to do. Um, the writer's aim and your aim should be the same. For example, when you when you when you have problems with algebra and you search online and find out how, how to solve algebraic um, equations, whoever has written a tutorial or has written um, a self-help article or a manual article on how to solve algebra must also intend to solve algebraic equations with the manual or self-help article. So in a way that when you read, you're able to follow up, you're able to, how do I put it? You're able to follow up and um, understand and comprehend. You're able to overcome your um, difficulty, the difficulty you faced that made you search for a solution to um, algebraic equations. So yeah, it says, self-help articles or manuals or guides are usually expected or are generally expected to okay 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 so it is generally expected that guides are shorter concise and more to the point than manual yeah manuals break down everything enable you to understand everything but a guy is just in steps number one wash the apple number two skin the apple Number one, three, slice the apple into pieces. Number four, the stone the apple, yeah, like that, systematically. And um, a manual is expected to give a more in-depth information and instruction than a guide. However, in practicality, the terms are often used interchangeably. Yes, yeah, it takes it takes um, a lot of understanding to differentiate between manuals and guides. So this explanation was called from difference between manual and guide. Difference between manual and guide. Yes, it's, it's um, an article you find online if you can, if you have time to search for it. And um, yeah, this is where we draw the curtains.